China Burma India Theater (CBI) was the United States military designation during World War II for the China and Southeast Asian or India Burma (IBT) theaters. Operational command of allied forces including US forces in the CBI was officially the responsibility of the supreme commanders for Southeast Asia or China. However, U.S. forces in practice were usually overseen by General Joseph Stilwell, the Deputy Allied Commander in China. The term, CBI, was significant in logistical, material, and personnel matters. It was and is commonly used within the U.S. for these theaters. Well-known Allied units in the CBI included the Chinese Expeditionary Force, the Flying Tigers, Transport and Bomber Units Flying the Hump, the 1st Air Commando Group, the engineers who built Lado Road, the 5307th Composite Unit Provisional, popularly known as Merrill's Marauders, and the 5332D Brigade, Provisional or Mars Task Force, which assumed the Marauders mission. Topic. U.S. strategy for China Japanese policy towards China had long been a source of international controversy. Western powers had exploited China through the open-door policy, advocated by United States diplomat William Woodville Rockhill, while Japan intervened more directly, creating the puppet state of Manchukuo. By 1937, Japan was engaged in a full-scale war of conquest in China. The infamous rape of Nanking galvanized Western opinion and led to direct financial aid for the nationalists and increasing economic sanctions against Japan. In 1941, the U.S. made a series of decisions to support China in its war with Japan. Lend-lease supplies were provided after President Franklin D. Roosevelt announced the defense of China to be vital to the defense of the United States. Over the summer, as Japan moved south into French Indochina, the U.S., Britain and the Netherlands instituted an oil embargo on Japan, cutting off 90% of its supplies. The embargo threatened the operations of the Kwantung Army, which had over a million soldiers deployed in China. Japan responded with a tightly coordinated offensive on December 7 8, simultaneously attacking Pearl Harbor, the Philippines, Malaya, Singapore, Hong Kong, Guam, Wake Island, and Thailand. Japan cut off Allied supplies to China that had been coming through Burma. China could be supplied only by flying over the Himalaya Mountains, the hump, from India, or capturing territory in Burma and building a new road, the Lado Road. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Burma. In 1941 and 1942, Japan was overextended. Its naval base could not defend its conquests, and its industrial base could not strengthen the navy. To cut off China from Allied aid, it went into Burma, captured Rangoon on 8 March 1942, cutting the Burma Road lifeline to China. Moving north the Japanese took Tungu, Burma, then captured Lashio in Upper Burma on 29 April. The British, primarily concerned with India, looked to Burma as the main theatre of action against Japan and wanted Chinese troops to fight there. The United States conjured up visions of millions of Chinese soldiers who would hold the Japanese then throw them back, while providing close in airbases for a systematic firebombing of Japanese cities. The overland supply route from India to China had to go through Burma. Chinese nationalist leader Chiang Kai shek realized it was all fantasy. On the other hand, there were vast sums of American dollars available if he collaborated. He did so and managed to feed his starving soldiers, but they were so poorly equipped and led that offensive operations against the Japanese in China were impossible. However, Chang did release two Chinese armies for action in Burma under Stilwell. They were smashed by the Japanese and Stilwell, on foot, barely escaped to India. The recovery of Burma and construction of the Lado Road to supply China via Burma became an obsession for Stilwell. 
On April 14, 1942, William Donovan, as Coordinator of Information forerunner of the Office of Strategic Services, activated Detachment 101 for action behind enemy lines in Burma. The first unit of its kind, the detachment was charged with gathering intelligence, harassing the Japanese through guerrilla actions, identifying targets for the Army Air Force to bomb, and rescuing downed Allied airmen. Because Detachment 101 was never larger than a few hundred Americans, it relied on support from various tribal groups in Burma. In particular, the vigorously anti-Japanese Kachin people were vital to the unit's success. Detachment 101's efforts opened the way for Stilwell's Chinese forces, Wingate's raiders, Merrill's marauders, and the counterattack against the Japanese Imperial lifeline. <laughs> Allied command structure U.S. and Allied land forces U.S. forces in the CBI were grouped together for administrative purposes under the command of General Joseph Vinegar Joe Stillwell. However, unlike other combat theaters, for example the European Theater of Operations, the CBI was never a theater of operations and did not have an overall operational command structure. Initially U.S. land units were split between those who came under the operational command of the India Command under General Sir Archibald Wavell, as the Commander-in-Chief in India, and those in China, which technically at least were commanded by Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek, as the Supreme Allied Commander in China. However, Stilwell often broke the chain of command and communicated directly with the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff on operational matters. This continued after the formation of the Southeast Asia Command and the appointment of Admiral Lord Mountbatten as Supreme Allied Commander. When Joint Allied Command was agreed upon, it was decided that the senior position should be held by a member of the British military because the British dominated Allied operations on the Southeast Asian theatre by weight of numbers in much the same way as the US did in the Pacific theatre of operations. Admiral Lord Mountbatten was appointed as the Supreme Allied Commander of Southeast Asia Forces in October 1943. General Stilwell, who also had operational command of the Northern Combat Area Command NCAC, a U.S.-Chinese formation, was to report in theory to Gen. George Gifford, commander of 11th Army Group, so that NCAC and the British 14th Army, under the command of General William Slim, could be coordinated. However, in practice, Gen. Stilwell never agreed to this arrangement. Stilwell was able to do this because of his multiple positions within complex command structures, including especially his simultaneous positions of Deputy Supreme Allied Commander Southeast Asia, and Chief of Staff to Chinese leader Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. As SEAC's deputy leader, Stilwell was Gifford's superior, but as operational commander of NCAC, Gifford was Stilwell's superior. As the two men did not get on, this inevitably lead to conflict and confusion. Stilwell, however, bitterly resisted taking orders from Gifford. To watch Stilwell, when hard-pressed, shift his opposition from one of the several strong points he held by virtue of his numerous allied, American and Chinese offices, to another was a lesson in mobile offensive defense. Eventually at a SEAC meeting to sort out the chain of command for NCAC, Stilwell astonished everyone by saying, I am prepared to come under General Slim's operational control until I get to Kamaang. Although far from ideal, this compromise was accepted, although Gen. 
Stilwell was the control and coordinating point for all command activity in the theater. His assumption of personal direction of the advance of the Chinese Lado forces into North Burma in late 1943 meant that he was often out of touch with both his own headquarters and with the overall situation. Not until late 1944, after Stilwell was recalled to Washington, was the chain of command clarified. His overall role, and the CBI command, was then split among three people, L.T. Gen. Raymond Wheeler became Deputy Supreme Allied Commander Southeast Asia, Major General Albert Wedemeyer became Chief of Staff to Chiang Kai-shek, and Commander of U.S. Forces, China Theater USFCT. L.T. Gen. Daniel Sultan was promoted, from Deputy Commander of CBI to Commander of U.S. Forces, India Burma Theater and Commander of the NCAC. The 11th Army Group was redesignated Allied Land Forces South East Asia and NCAC was decisively placed under this formation. However, by the time the last phase of the Burma campaign began in earnest, NCAC had become irrelevant, and it was dissolved in early 1945. Topic: <laughs> U.S. Army and Allied Air Forces. After consultation among the Allied governments, Air Command Southeast Asia was formed in November 1943 to control all Allied air forces in the theater, with Air Chief Marshal Sir Richard Pearce as Commander-in-Chief, under Pearce's deputy, USAAF Major General George E. Stratemeyer, Eastern Air Command EAC was organized in 1943 to control Allied air operations in Burma, with headquarters in Calcutta, unlike the strained relations and confusion encountered in coordinating Allied ground force commands, air force operations in the CBI proceeded relatively smoothly. Relations improved even further after new U.S. military aid began arriving, together with capable USAAF officers such as Brigadier General William D. Old of CGI Troop Carrier Command, and Colonels Philip Cochran and John R. Allison of the 1st Air Commando Group. Within Eastern Air Command, Air Marshal Sir John Baldwin commanded the 3rd Tactical Air Force, originally formed to provide close air support to the 14th Army. Baldwin was later succeeded by Air Marshal Sir Alec Corriton, U.S. Brigadier General Howard C. Davidson and later Air Commodore F. J. W. Mellersh commanded the Strategic Air Force. In the new command, various units of the Royal Air Force and the U.S. 10th Air Force worked side by side. In the autumn of 1943, SEAAC had 48 RAF and 17 USAAF squadrons. By the following May, the figures had risen to 64 and 28, respectively. At Eastern Air Command, Gen. Stratemeyer had a status comparable to that of Stilwell. Coordinating the efforts of the various Allied air components while maintaining relations with diverse command structures proved a daunting task. Part of Stratemeyer's command, the 10th Air Force, had been integrated with the RAF 3rd Tactical Air Force in India in December 1943 and was tasked with a number of roles in support of a variety of Allied forces. Another component, the U.S. 14th Air Force in China, was under the jurisdiction of Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek as China Theater Commander. Although the India-China Division of the AAF's Air Transport Command received its tonnage allocations from Stratemeyer as Stilwell's deputy, ICD reported directly to headquarters ATC in Washington, D.C. In the spring of 1944, with the arrival of Command B-29s in the theater, another factor would be added to Air Force operations. XX Bomber Command of the 20th Air Force was tasked with the strategic bombing of Japan under Operation Matterhorn, and reported directly to the JCS in Washington, D.C. However, XX Bomber Command remained totally dependent on Eastern Air Command for supplies, bases, ground staff, and infrastructure support. After a period of reshuffling, Eastern Air Command's air operations began to show results. 
In August 1944, Admiral Mountbatten noted in a press conference that EAC fighter missions had practically swept the Japanese Air Force from Burmese skies. Between the formation of SEAAC in November 1943, and the middle of August 1944, American and British forces operating in Burma destroyed or damaged more than 700 Japanese aircraft with a further 100 aircraft probably destroyed. This achievement considerably reduced dangers to Air Transport Command cargo planes flying in support of the Hump airlift operation. By May 1944, EAC resupply missions in support of the Allied ground offensive had carried 70,000 tons of supplies and transported a total of 93,000 men, including 25,500 casualties evacuated from the battle areas. These figures did not include tonnage flown in the Hump airlift missions to China. USAAF Order of Battle 20th Air Force XX Bomber Command XXBC combat elements moved in the summer of 1944 from the United States to India where they engaged in very long-range Boeing B-29 Superfortress bombardment operations against Japan, Formosa, China, Indochina and Burma. While in India, XXBC was supported logistically by 10th Air Force and the India-China Division of the Air Transport Command. B-29 groups moved to West Field, Tinian, in early 1945. <laughs> Timeline Early 1942 Stilwell was promoted to lieutenant general and tasked with establishing the CBI. The 25th of February 1942 Stilwell arrived in India by which time Singapore and Burma had both been invaded by the Japanese army. The 10th of March 1942 Stilwell is named chief of staff of allied armies in the Chinese theater of operations. 19 March 1942 Stilwell's command in China is extended to include the Chinese 5th and 6th Armies operating in Burma after Chiang Kai-shek gave his permission. 20 March 1942 Chinese troops under Stilwell engaged Japanese forces along the Satang River in Burma. 9 April 1942 Claire Chenault inducted into U.S. Army as a colonel, bringing the AVG Flying Tigers squadrons under Stilwell's nominal authority. 16 April 1942 7,000 British soldiers, and 500 prisoners and civilians were encircled by the Japanese 33rd Division at Yenonguang. 19 April 1942 – The 113th, Regiment of the Chinese Expeditionary Forces New 38th Division led by General Sun Li Zhen attacked and defeated the encircling Japanese troops rescuing the encircled British troops and civilians. This is historically called Battle of Yenonguang. 2 May 1942 – The commander of Allied forces in Burma, General Harold Alexander, ordered a general retreat to India. Stilwell left his Chinese troops and began the long evacuation with his personal staff he called it a «walk out» to India. Most of the Chinese troops, who were supposed to be under Stilwell's command, were deserted in Burma without knowledge of the retreat. Under Chiang Kai-shek they made a hasty and disorganized retreat to India. Some of them tried to return to Yunnan through remote mountainous forests and out of these, at least half died. The 24th of May 1942 Stilwell arrived in Delhi. New Delhi and Ramgarh became the main training center for Chinese troops in India. Chiang Kai-shek gave Stilwell command of what was left of the 22nd and 38th Divisions of the Chinese Army. The 1st of December 1942 British General Sir Archibald Wavell, as Allied Supreme Commander South East Asia, agreed with Stilwell to make the Lado Road an American operation. August 1943 – U.S. creates a jungle commando unit, similar to the Chindits, to be commanded by Major General Frank Merrill, it is informally called, Merrill's Marauders. 
Exhaustion and disease led to the early evacuation of many Chinese and American troops before the coming assault on Myathkina. The 21st of December Stilwell assumed direct control of operations to capture Myathkina, having built up forces for an offensive in northern Burma. The 24th of February 1944 Merrill's Marauders attacked the Japanese 18th Division in Burma. This action enabled Stilwell to gain control of the Hakaing Valley. The 17th of May 1944 British General Slim in command of the Burma campaign handed control of the Chindits to Stilwell. The 17th of May 1944 Chinese troops with the help of Merrill's Marauders captured Myatkina airfield. The 3rd of August 1944 Myatkina fell to the Allies. The marauders had advanced 750 miles and fought in five major engagements and 32 skirmishes with the Japanese army. They lost 700 men, only 1,300 marauders reached their objective and of these, 679 had to be hospitalized. This included General Merrill who had suffered a second heart attack before going down with malaria. Some time before 27 August 1944, Mountbatten Supreme Allied Commander SEAC ordered General Stilwell to evacuate all the wounded Chindits. During 1944 the Japanese in Operation Ichigo overran U.S. air bases in eastern China. Chiang Kai-shek blamed Stilwell for the Japanese success, and pressed the U.S. High Command to recall him. October 1944 Roosevelt recalled Stilwell, whose role was split as was the CBI. Lieutenant General Raymond Wheeler became Deputy Supreme Allied Commander South East Asia. Major General Albert Wedemeyer became Chief of Staff to Chiang Kai-shek and Commander of the U.S. Forces, China Theater USFCT. Lieutenant General Daniel Sultan was promoted from Deputy Commander to become Commander of U.S. Forces India Burma Theater USFIBT and Commander of the Northern Combat Area Command. The 12th of January 1945, the first convoy over the Lado Road of 113 vehicles led by General Pick from Lado reached Kunming, China on 4 February 1945. Over the next seven months, 35,000 tons of supplies in 5,000 vehicles were carried along it. See also India-China Division Chinese Army in India Burma Campaign Philip Cochrane The Dixie Mission U.S. Campaigns in World War II, China-Burma-India Theater Aus Detachment 101 Charles N. Hunter Chinese Expeditionary Force, Burma <laughs>